Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hello, moms, and welcome to episode 33 of the Gather Moms podcast. We are in season three, 30, episode 33 and season three. Wow. It's the episode, it's, okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> anyway, listen, we finally made it to a room of the house, okay? We told you we were going to get there. We just, know, we don't know what happened, but yeah. love ferns and picture boxes got in the way. But here we are at episode 33, and we are in the bedroom. And we are so excited because we have a special guest on with us today, Susan C. And y'all, she is phenomenal. She is a homeschool mom of, wait for it, seven. Listen, those are both God's numbers. 33. <gasps> seven. Oh, this is the miracle seven. episode. Oh, it is. Y'all better saddle up. <laughs> and she is going to tell us about her bedroom and how she has made it her sanctuary. And she has just some very practical, good tips. She's so real. She's so authentic. And we know that you're going to love this conversation. Here we go. Hey, Susan. We are so excited to have you on today. So our friend and director of our Gather Community Groups, Jenny Worsham, heard you speak at MOPS at uh, a Dallas church a couple of years ago and just came back raving about you. And she said, hey, at some point we have got to loop this woman in what, what we're doing over here on Gather. And then we found out that you are also good friends with our friend, Mary DeMuth. And on top of that, you are friends with a new friend of ours on the podcast, Christina Garrett. So it feels <laughs> like this meeting is a long time coming. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you are connected to some amazing women that I love. So I'm so happy to be here. Oh, well, I love that too. I love that. And we've been anxious to meet you. So we're so glad to finally have you on. Tell our mamas a little bit about who you are. Wonderful. I am Susan C. I live in Austin, Texas with my college sweetheart, Ron. Uh, we are the parents of seven children. Whoop, she said it, <laughs> seven. Everybody take a breath. That's right. <laughs> it's not contagious. I can hug you. You won't catch it. That's not how this works, everybody. We could have that talk another time. Uh, we have one boy and six girls. <gasps> Lots so, of weddings. Oh my goodness. Mercy. Oh yeah. And most people <laughs> want to know like birth order. Yeah. So you, like you had the one, where is he? He's the oldest because God is merciful. That's yes. what I love to say. Okay. He's yes. very kind to him. He's the oldest. Uh, so right now my kids are age range 24 to 11. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Oh. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing. I would agree. It is amazing. Uh, we are homeschool parents. We've homeschooled. This is our 20th year of homeschooling. Wow. We have graduated three and we've got one in the shoot. She is graduating this spring. Uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I feel like I need a minute to process a lot. That's I'm just, lot. you are winning. You are so winning right now. I mean, all the things. <laughs> Listen, I want to know, did that oldest boy have to share a bathroom with those six girls? He did. He did. That is, mm-hmm. see that I've got two boys and a girl and that's impressive to me because I bet he was happy to eject out of that place and get his <laughs> own bathroom. Yeah. It did not take him any time to, to skedaddle when he had a new place to go. He was like, <laughs> got it. That's I'm on awesome. it. Awesome. <laughs> now are all of those children, are any of those children adopted or you birthed all those babies? One by one. Yes, oh, you did. No mm-hmm. twins one one. either. It was just no twins, no adoption, none of that. Mm-hmm. I'm asking all these questions because I'm just sitting here just I feel like trying to process <laughs> no listen her uterus is strong man she knows how to have babies yes Ooh. she does yes she does yes. <sighs> it'd be fruitful and multiply with a whole situation over here like yes clearly clearly you said we will obey <laughs> <laughs> I can ace that I might jack up some other things but I could ace that part <laughs> y'all did gold start Hey, you also have your own podcast for moms called Mentor for Moms, and you are a sp- sought-after speaker and certified life coach. We all need some coaching from her, for yes, sure. Yes, So tell us what got that started for you. Like, why, where did your desire to invest in mamas come from? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I 
am committed to being that mama, that inspiration and encouragement that I longed for when my kids were little, when I was getting no sleep, when my body was going through all these kinds of changes. And I just needed somebody to help me figure out, is this normal? Like, is this, is anybody else feeling this way? Uh, please tell me it gets better. Like all kinds of support is what I was longing for and desperate for. Yeah. And I remember making one of those statements, you know, where you stamp your foot and say, you know what, when I become the older woman, I'm going to look back and I'm going to help moms behind me. Yeah. I must say that that sounded very, uh, you know, great at the time, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that when I became the older woman, I still don't feel older. I still feel like, wait, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. When am I, I still feel like I got questions, like somebody helped me out. But at the same time, I've gone far enough down this motherhood road that I definitely have some things to say. And that's what I do over on the podcast. Oh, I love that. I love that. We all, I, I agree. So I feel like I'm starting to become an older mom. <laughs> I'm looking back and going, God, those girls are young. Uh, What's yeah. up? Yeah. And I'm the same way. I'm like, wait a second. I'm not done yet. I got questions. <laughs> yeah. My hormones are still raging in this body. Oh. I need someone to tell me. In a whole new way. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that resonates with me too. Cause there are some things I feel like, yes, I could pass along some knowledge, but other areas where I'm like, I'm hungry for, I don't know what this next step looks like. Mm -hmm. So I love that. That's so good. So Susan, I've been getting to know your mission a little bit and you know what you're about to prepare for this ep episode. And I did not have to go far to find a great gem on the homepage of your website. And I want to read what it says. Cause I thought this was fantastic. Perfect. Your your homepage says, have you ever noticed in the business world when someone is hired in a management position, one of the first things they receive is training. Manager training is designed to help them succeed in the role as a manager. As moms, we're doing lots of managing with little to no training. It's time for that to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, I cannot tell you, I read that and that was like, yes, you just said it. And mm -hmm. that aligns so much with our mission here too, because you know, they say the joke is, you know, parenting doesn't come with a handbook, right? And it mm -hmm. doesn't. You know, there are kind of now, thankfully, some books that help us along. I don't got time to read, though, when no. I'm staying up all night with that baby. <laughs> Talk no. about it. Mm -hmm. But for sure, we're not being taught how to manage a home mm -hmm. with all these babies in it. You know, what, the things that we've discovered that are part of the job where you are now the documentarian and the historian and the nurse and the driver and the cook and the nutritional consultant, mm -hmm. all, all these the things, things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the soccer coach that, I mean, it could go on and on and sure. there's no training. And just like you're saying though, that's our job. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it, for someone out in the world that in the business world that becomes a manager, they go into manager training. Yes. Yes. And so to get to know me, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I have gone through a certification program for life coaching and I, my husband and I have our own business. So like these three aspects have all really supported me mm. to create the material that I do for moms. Cause I just believe that women have the capacity to do things. We just don't have the information. We don't have any idea what we're doing. And we're too busy trying to keep people fed and stop fighting and bickering and, and tearing up the house, honestly, mm -hmm. to have a minute or a full thought of like what to do. Yeah. So someone could just kind of interject in our lives via a short book. Come on, yeah. not these oh, thick books. Preach. And or a podcast where they could come in and give us some practical tangible ideas on how to step into this role of mother who is a visionary, mother who is a manager. That's what I want to offer support to. So when you listen to me at any time, I'm usually teaching on a tool or principle, giving you a guideline to help you figure out how to navigate the chaos that is the everyday experience of us as moms. I love that. And we, we, uh, that's our heartbeat too. Yes, no, <laughs> because exactly. we She's don't speaking need, our language. Yeah, because we don't need all this pie in the sky, mm -hmm. feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't. I need mm -hmm. actual information about how to get all the kids in the car without screaming and <laughs> it taking 25 minutes, right? Yes. You think. I need real tips, you know, That's on right. how to do those things. And so I love that. And I do think that you are so practical and just kind of helping us tweak. We could do this a little bit better. We could be a more intentional here, mm -hmm. helping us kind of see the road ahead so that we, we do those things well. 
Absolutely. I want to see mamas begin to gain a sense of confidence mm. about this role of mother. I, love I think that. quite all too often as moms, we feel a lot of guilt about yes. what we did or didn't do. We feel a lot of apprehension or insecurity about trying to navigate our children's changes and their development and how we're running our home. I just want to see us be able to have this sense of confidence that as we approach our day and as we move forward with our families, we trust that what we're doing is our best and our best is enough. Mm. It's just time for us to step into that place. And I'm just done seeing all of the suffering that we're all going through and yes. the struggle and the doubt. Those things are real and I'm here to be real for it. Like, yeah, me too, still have doubts, still have questions. At the same time, I have a confidence and a trust in what I'm doing that it's enough until God equips me with more when in his grace and in his strength, then I can operate in it. Oh, preach. We that can end so it right good. there. I know. I know. I was listening to this um, other podcast the other day. They were talking about how when you're an anxious person, you actually pass that on to your team. Mm. And I thought about that in motherhood, that um, if I don't have confidence in myself as a mom and I'm mm -hmm. anxious, I'm actually, it's permeating my team, which is my kids and my husband and my home. Mm -hmm. And I love what you just said about, we need that confidence as mamas because sometimes we're looking around for people to give that to us. Like I want my kids to tell me what a great job I'm doing. I want my husband to tell me what a great job I'm doing. Bless mm -hmm. them. They don't really do that. No. And so then I just feel empty and, and guilty and like a failure. And so I love the idea that we as moms can come alongside each other and say, yes, girl, God gave you those kids. He's going to give you what you need to be the mm -hmm. mama for them. That's go. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, mm -hmm. Susan, in this uh, season, we are talking all about our homes, and we're trying to go room by room. We just had some struggles getting to a room. We've been talking about random, like, house plants and picture boxes, and we're going to get there. We're we are there. generally staying in the house, Susan, but yes. we mm -hmm. kind of had a map out of, like, we're going to go to the kitchen, to the bath. No. We haven't gotten there yet. No. 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 <laughs> no. But we're so excited because you have actually chosen a room. Yeah. But before we talk about that, we want you just to tell us about your home. Tell us who lives in it. What do y'all do on a weekly basis? Do you have a favorite spot in your home? Okay. So we live here and, uh, and people love these details. You know, like everybody got into the tiny house thing. This family is a no. Um, <laughs> so we, <laughs> we, we, there's no way you can get all of us into a tiny house. That's not the will of God. So we live in a 2,400 square foot house. So it's still not grand right. in the you know, house plans in America. Um, there's uh, eight of us that live here. I had to stop and yes. think for a minute. So my son lives across the street with my parents. Oh, so shout out. We, we have this proximity. We have our own little pandemic pod, you know, like we were our, our own little ecosystem here. Um, so he, that was where he moved out when he got his own bathroom. All he had to do was just go across the street. <laughs> He could have done so that like in freshman story. year of high school or something. I don't know yeah. why he waited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, darn it. They didn't move in <laughs> until after. He okay. Went. Otherwise he would have, he would have went for it. But the funny thing is he was actually away for the summer when they moved in. So his sisters moved him across the street. Oh, <laughs> It, and I do mean there were boxes just being drop kicked, like, boom, just, <laughs> all right, sir, like, get out the room so that they could begin to disperse themselves among the bed. They wanted his room. Basically. Of course. Yeah. They were like, out, sir, yeah. like, out. Yeah. So he came home from this summer break to a new space and the way his sisters just kind of dumped his stuff in that new room and he just kind of made it work. So in some ways, I would say it still looks like that, but that's, that's, just, <laughs> that's just... That's not your issue to do. with. I just with. waved the flag at yeah. that at this uh -huh. point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he was raised better than that, but whatever this, he's he's grown, he could do what he does. Um, so that's us living here in the house. Um, and the girls still work out there sharing of the bedroom. And we do our whole back and forth across the street of hanging out with my parents and checking in with them and making sure they're good. And uh, this is our space. That's, That's a great awesome. setup. I yes. love that. So mm -hmm. like weekly basis, you guys are homeschooling. Do you do outside yeah. activities? Your husband goes to work. What, what are y'all up to? Yes. So because we have our own business, sometimes he's operating here from the house and doing his thing. Um, I have a daughter who's graduated from college and um, she's able to work from home. So her back bedroom is also set up as a corporate office. Wow. So there's a lot going on in this house. So we've got 
one who's in high school who's doing community college classes and then we've got a couple that are doing online classes and then we homeschool and then I can hold up sometimes here in the bedroom and do podcast interviews and like talking to you guys. Okay, awesome. Do you have a favorite spot in the house? In the wintertime, my favorite spot's in front of the fireplace. Amen. Doing puzzles. Mm -hmm. I love to do puzzles. It is one of those activities that, you know, it's non-commitment. If I do two pieces and walk away, it could just sit there. Um, You know, it's not like a project that requires me to finish because what do we finish as mamas? Like not much. Um, which is why I like the puzzle because it does have a completion. Like we can get there. Uh, And let me just tell you, me taking on this winter activity of sitting in front of the fireplace, doing a puzzle, stills and quiets my mind. Mm. But it's amazing how my kids drift in and we'll, they'll sit down to do puzzle with me and then they'll start talking about st- stuff that's on their hearts and okay. on their mind. Yes. And if they say something shocking, I can just become really interested in one piece <laughs> of that puzzle. You know, I just keep that poker really, face. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by <laughs> that piece of puzzle while I'm trying to say, Lord, if you don't give me something to say to that, because what am I supposed to say? That's I didn't know so they would good. say that. But it's so a good. beautiful time for connection with them. I love that. I love that. I love it. Okay. So uh, when we reach out to you about being a guest, like Rebecca said, you knew the room that you mm-hmm. wanted to talk about. And we are so intrigued. Mm-hmm. And you told us that you want to talk about the bedroom. Yeah. So tell us, tell us about your bedroom with all mm-hmm. these people that live in your house and mm-hmm. why you picked that room. Mm-hmm. Well, um, my bedroom is a type of sanctuary for our family. It's definitely that sanctuary for my husband and I. It's where we come in, where we come in to refresh, where we come in to connect. It's a a moment for us to get away. I mean, we got seven kids, clearly. We connect. Um, And then, uh, but beyond that, when our kids want to talk to us, the room is where we come. Like the room is where we shut the door. Uh, I talk about on my podcast quite often how I do an annual time of talking to my kids one-on-one where I ask them the same 10 questions every year. And I, I share that in detail for anybody who might be interested in doing that with their kids. So this has become like a safe space to come in and to share, to not feel judged. This is not a place where we do a lot of correction and like firm talking to. This is that place where they come and say, hey, here's where I'm struggling, or here's where I need help, or here's questions that I have, or this is what I don't understand. Or I got people who've got, you know, skin stuff, where they're like, is this bump normal? Is yeah. this is this normal? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is the space uh-huh. where all of that happens. Oh, true. Uh-huh. <laughs> we yes. do all that too. Yes. Yeah. So I love the idea of kind of an annual, because, you know, in my business, I do that. We do annual evaluations. Mm-hmm. And that is so wise of you. I absolutely love that, that you do that in your home. Mm-hmm. And I, I see, again, the parallel of we're, we're seeing what these protocols we've already put in place in the business community. Mm-hmm. And so why can't we have that same intentionality in the management of our home? Absolutely. How do you feel like your kids respond to that annual time? Is there, is there times when they're anxious about it? Do they always look forward to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, once they understood the heart behind it, they are excited to have their time. Initially, I was just excited with the idea. And so I was like, Miss Spontaneous, hey, (laughs) this kid is quiet and they're watching a movie. Hey, son, come with me in my room, let's talk. Not realizing that for him, he's thinking, oh gosh, like (laughs) what I do, (laughs) what What does she know? How much does she know? (laughs) Uh Who told on me? Like he's running through this conversation where in my mind, everybody else was busy or taking a nap. It was a great time to finally sit down and talk. So I'd ask him a question and be like, so pour out your heart, son. Tell me me all the good stuff. (laughs) Right. And he's looking at me like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how I should answer this question. Am I in trouble? Like, are you going to use this against me? Like who, who is the, who told on me? Like what is going on? So I had to work through helping to, hey, it's good. It's all good. Like, I'm just listening. I just want to hear from you. But once he got it, oh, like really regularly looking forward to it. And it's like with anything in the household, once you get like one kid to buy in and be able to tell the others, no, really, like for real, it's good. Like she means it. It's no tricks in there. Uh, It's been a great experience. And I want to say that it's because I've done that with my kids for so many years, 
it's why I get to hear some of the things I hear from them now. Right. It's why I hear questions about relationships or work questions or career planning or just fears about this pandemic or, you know, the social unrest we've dealt with and, you know, needing to be affirmed in their beauty as beautiful Black children. And, you know, there's so much that I've heard from them because they recognize that mama has proved for years now that she can be trusted. Gosh, that's good. That's that's so good too, because I think as moms, I find myself doing that with my oldest. So I have a freshman in high school. And I think sometimes we use things in their life to like make fun or to to laugh about. And I just, I'm starting to feel really convicted by the Lord that those are his personal parts of his life. And I want to protect that. I want him to trust me so that he knows he's safe with me and that his struggles are safe with me. Because sometimes as a speaker and writer, you're basically using your family as material for what you're teaching other people. Right. Yeah. So I love that you said that you have proven to them that you are trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. They know you're a safe place. That's fantastic. It's huge. So with that bedroom being a sanctuary, you know, and there's all these other people in your house, I feel like maybe at some point you had to set up some boundaries or some safeguards to protect that room. So what are those things? (laughs) The biggest one is absolutely no laundry comes into this room. Like okay. None. So when my kids were little, if someone came to visit and we have the perpetual pile of laundry, I will not lie and say it's laundry day. It's always laundry day in this house. <laughs> That's right. So yep. um, when they would, we would have guests come, it would be like, quick, get all of the baskets out of the living room and they would get shoved in my bedroom. Right. Okay, right. And then in the evening when my husband and I are trying to relax, I would look over at the laundry and think, well, there's one more thing I didn't get done today. And right. I didn't get the dishes done. And I, we da, 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 and I start running through all the ways I'm failing and just not doing well at anything. Uh-huh. And my hubby noticed that pattern for me. And he was like, is it the laundry? Like, is that what's bothering you? Tell you what. And like out it went. And he made this like grand announcement. No more laundry in our room ever. Wow. And and I just sat there like, that's brilliant. (laughs) Why didn't I think of that? Absolutely. Get this laundry out of here. Yes. So I don't have any laundry ever come into my room. If it's, in process, like it's been folded, it goes through my room into the closet, put away, but there's no like pit stop. Right. You're not doing the laundry on your bed. No, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have another question for you. This wasn't on the list. So if you need to pivot or handle this, however you want, it just came to my mind. (laughs) I'm thinking about you and all these babies. Y'all kind of know what you're doing in the bedroom, but you also have all these people that live with you. Mm -hmm. So is there is there a signal? Is there a procedure? What, how are you and your husband having intimate time together? Is there a signal to the kids? Is there, what do you guys do to make sure that they're not walking in on y'all? My yeah. mind is racing right now with all the signals you could give <laughs> to your children. Signals. I love it. I love it. Um, no, I don't think we have signals for them. We, we have signals for us, I yeah. you know, they'll be fine on the other side of the door. Uh, it's kind of my mindset. Um, <laughs> but I will say that we have a lock on the door. Right. So there's that part. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say that for my hubby and I, it's just kind of how my brain works. If the people are nearby the door, I just can't go there. Like right. I, I try and I'm like, babe, I love you, but I can't, I can't, I, can't. <laughs> just, yes. I just can't. Somebody's coming at just the wrong moment. And I'm not interested in having to shift gears and try to be mama right. and boom, took a wow, wow with you. Like, I just cannot do these things. So right. we're early morning, late night lovers. Yeah. Like that's how we make these things work yes. um, a- away from the people. And I won't ever buy a house where the parent bedroom is right by the kid bedroom. So in our house, we're on complete opposite sides of the house of them. Okay. And that gives me a yes. lot more freedom. So that's how it is in our house too. The kids are like kind of have their own wing, you know, they're on one side and we're on the other side. And I think that helps a lot. But I mean, I can't tell you the number of times that we tuck all the kids in and they should be down and we go should. lock the door mm-hmm. and then here is a little rat tap tap at yep. the door and you're yep. like, we'll be there in a minute. <laughs> yep. 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 
<laughs> that is just how we roll. Like we just, those things happen. I mean, life with children is just unpredictable. Like yeah. as soon as you think you got a plan, it changes. No. Well, and you have to be flexible. Like that's one of the things that nobody teaches you before you get married is that the honeymoon phase is great because it's you and him and nobody else. But when you add children, mm. you can't, you have to create new rhythms because mm. I mean, just the rat tat tat on the door, like I can't keep them from doing that. Yeah. So you have mm-hmm. to, I love what you said about we found new times mm-hmm. where we know we're going to have that special private time. Yeah. That's just not going to happen in the middle of the day or after school no. or, you know. No, but it just gets me tickled because the five-year-old is clueless of why we have the door locked. But the 13-year-old, I feel like it's probably like, hmm. Y'all only lock the door on Sundays and Wednesdays, so... Oh, she just said it. Y'all, listeners, she, she just said it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, yep. It's out there now. It's out there now. <laughs> yes, it is. That I also have found, though, that that has brought so much joy to our marriage is the mm-hmm. laughter that comes in the midst of the moment with, oh, sure. with the knock. Mm-hmm. And it's like you have no other choice <laughs> but to just laugh it out because, yep. Yeah. What else are we going to do? Right. Uh-huh. Right. And I think I'm going to say the thing that I could say now that I'm older, but truly what a gift to normalize that in your household. Uh, one of the conversations that, you know, I've talked about it on my podcast about what I tell my kids about relationships. And I initially with my older kids, super fearful mom, like how can I do all the things right? Tried to have a lot of conversation with them about purity and all these things about how to deal with relationships, especially when it comes to the conversation around sex. And now I'm at a place where I'm going, hey, let me normalize something for you. You were born a sexual being, like each one of you. That's how God created you. It's a normal part of your life. Now, what you get to do is take every part of your life including that sexual part and submit it to God and trust his timing and trust his instructions on how to handle that part of your life. I am in a season where I have his liberty and grace and freedom and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So I want to normalize that for y'all. I'm not going to tell you details and wig you out, but I will (laughs) let you know that your mama is enjoying God's grace over here in this part of her life. That's good. Well, and that'll preach because I think Rebecca and I potentially both got jacked up in that area, you know, <laughs> from b- growing up in the church and having well-meaning teachers, you know, say Called sex is bubble. bad, sex is bad. And then you get pregnant and you're supposed to all of a sudden be this vixen in the bedroom. You're like, wait a minute. Uh-uh. I thought this was bad. Uh huh. You know? Right. And you taught me all these years to be the good girl. And now when the lights go out, I'm supposed to be a whole different person. And I'm still in here going but nobody's really talked to me about this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that's... I don't want to create that space for my kids. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to take them too far where they're just like, okay, mom, you don't always have to talk about these things. But at the same time, I want to <laughs> normalize that that is a part of life. And that definitely is a part of a healthy marriage. Yeah. That's so good. So last question, what would you do to refresh? Did you refresh your bedroom when you decided this is my space? I'm going to protect it. Did you refresh? Did you change anything? Is it, you know, what are you doing there with that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for the longest time, our bedroom was shared with one of our kids. So when we had a newborn baby, we had the whole crib attached to the bed and, you know, making it easy for me to nurse at night and have to get up and go across the house. So part of the shift for me was kicking all the people out, kicking all the chores out, like creating a space that was for us throughout the night. Um, My hubby and I only have a queen size bed. We did that intentionally because he was like, if we get a king, somebody might jump in here with Uh us and we don't want that. So (laughs) if there's just enough space for the two of us, like we can never say, just get in the bed with us. We're too tired to deal with it. Uh We'll never say that. So so that keeps the the space just for us. And then um, once it was just our space, I thought, how do we create a feel of relaxation, of refreshing. And so I call my design aesthetic in our bedroom, shh. Yes. <laughs> that's nice. Yes. I said, that's the only way I know to describe it. Clearly I'm not an interior designer, <laughs> but you know how the, the design trends would have pops of color on a wall. I was like, I don't want them to pop in here. Like nothing pops, <laughs> everything's just shh. I want monochromatic, soft, soothing colors. So it's creams and golds and warm tones. And I just want to come in here and exhale. And that's what I do. 
and I notice my family does the same. That is fantastic. So one of the fun things we've been doing this uh, series with our podcast is that we're thinking up new signs for Hobby Lobby and Home Goods to sell to mamas. Ooh. So I think her sign should say, shh. Yeah. You just oh. need a sign that says, shh. Yeah. Shh. Over the door. Um, um, you just point yes. to it. They yeah. come in, you just point. Yeah, like that. Y'all know how, you know what to do. Mm-hmm. Like follow that mm-hmm. sign. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that. <laughs> so as we close out and we, I mean, I just, there's so much great stuff here. Thinking about our bedrooms. I think our moms are going to be processing all of these wonderful things and, and reassessing their own bedrooms. You know, what needs to get out of here so that this is a sanctuary and a safe place. What would be your challenge to our mamas or what do you want them to walk away with today that they need to hear about their own bedrooms? Hmm. In the bedroom and in the home, I encourage every mom to have a safe place for your eyes to land. So when you look at the floor and you see toys strewn everywhere and you see laundry that needs to be done, or when you go in the kitchen and there's dishes on the counter, that in your kitchen, in your living room, in your bedroom, there's always a safe place for your eyes to land. Mm -hmm. And that safe place is that thing that's always decorated and untouched. So You can look above all of the chaos and the undone chores and look up there and just go, ah, okay, I really like looking at that picture. Or I really like looking at that shelf with that beautiful word that reminds me of like to calm or chill or relax or whatever that word is. Like every room has that place because truly every room in a house that we live in is always going to have something that needs to be done. Of course. And that's your way to like woo and chill and just go, let me just look up there. I won't pay attention to what's screaming at me saying, here's where you're failing. Here's what you need to get done. Yeah. Here's what you need to rush and hurry up and do. Instead, yeah. you just go, I'm going to look right there. Yeah. Yeah. She needs a sign for her bathroom. Woo what does mm-hmm. Wusa mean? Am what I was that what from? Was that? I'm trying to remember what that was from. I, I want to Seinfeld. say it's from a movie too, but I don't remember. I don't know if it's from The Lion King or Seinfeld. I am going to say I'm <laughs> picking one. You pick Seinfeld? Do you think it's from Seinfeld? I oh. doubt I have ever seen Seinfeld, so I'm going to go with Lion King. <laughs> I, it might be Lion King, but I on Seinfeld, Kramer used to say, Serenity now. <laughs> Listen, I know that's so Kate random. has a whole thing with sitcoms late at night. It's just part of her life. She just can't help it. Golden Girls, Seinfeld, Frasier. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I play Candy Crush or Solitaire, but you know what? Everybody's got their thing. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody's got their thing. I love how practical you were today. I just love how the things that you encouraged our moms are things I could do. Like, I could do that today. Yeah. I could walk out of here today and go to my bedroom and create a a place for my eyes to land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where when I just need a moment, I just thank you so much for just being, like, in it with us. Like, understanding, look, you don't have a lot of time to change it all. So let's just do a couple little tweaks that are going to make you just feel more confident as a mama. Yeah, that's so good. Well, and I think a lot of our moms are going to want to check out your, what you use for your annual evaluation. So tell our moms how they can connect with you. Absolutely. So if you come to my website, which is my name, susanc.com, susan, S-E-A-Y.com, and click the shop button, you can go there and order the intentional parent card set. And in the intentional parent card set, I have a set of cards that have questions that help you get to heart level conversations with your kids, where you can really engage with them instead of asking them, hey, how was your day? And you get fine, good. (laughs) And you're like sitting there like, "Uh uh-huh, please, you know, more info. And they give you none. (laughs) Like these questions will actually help them to engage with you. But one of the cards in that entire set is the 10 questions card. And it's 10 questions to ask your kids every year where you get together and you have a one-on-one with them and you hear their answers to the questions that will help you to be able to see the strength of your relationship with them from your kid's perspective instead of your assumption about how well you all are doing. Absolutely fantastic. So good. Isn't that great? Yes, that is so great. Susan, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We think you are amazing and we know that our moms are going to love you and we are just so thankful that we have finally connected at what seemed to be a destined relationship so thank you so much for being with us i love being here you guys take care thank Thank you. you i love susan i love that she is 
a little bit ahead of us in the mom game. You know, she she does have what did you say? Two kids in college or two out of the house? Like and one, one about one yeah, in the maybe shoot? three. Yeah. Listen, I just I'm like, yes, girl, you have got some out, some in, and you still love what you do. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, I can and do this. She's still homeschooling these babies, That's right. and she's still mentoring moms, and she just. I love it. There were so many things that I cling to. What do you feel like is your one thing from what she talked about today? Well, I had never considered that when I use my bedroom as like the catch-all for uh-huh. the things I haven't done that day, that then it becomes a hindrance to me when I try and go in there and rest because I'm just surrounded by things that I didn't finish. Right. One of the things that I always put in my bedroom is returns. So anytime I have something to return to a store, it goes in my room on the floor And I never considered that it always feels like to me I'm never done Wow! because those bags are sitting right there. And Susan talked about laundry. And I thought, what a, for me, revolutionary thought that my bedroom does not become the place where those things land. They land somewhere else in my house so that when I go in my bedroom at night to relax and rest, connect with my husband, take a minute away from the kids, I really can not feel like I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that because it's not staring me in the face. That is so good. I love that. I love that that's your one thing. So I really liked the intentional conversations. And I I thought about how, I mean, I was the one who at my, uh, in case people don't know, I work part-time for my dad's company. And I do human resources stuff. And so I set up our annual evaluation program. And I keep tabs on that, you know, for each employee, et cetera. And, you know, so why am I not being that intentional in my home. You know, I set up a whole program for all these employees to be successful and I could do that in my own home. And I just think, you know, I think it's funny what she talked about because I imagine that the kids the first time were like, what is going to happen? I thought, I love that she, the boy was like, uh, who told you? What did they tell you? How much did they tell you? Right. Or what did you find? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so it would be a new thing for the kiddos, but I love the chance because Because that's what our employees do at the company is they have a chance to give feedback to their supervisor about how they feel their job is going, about how they feel about the relationship with their supervisor. It's not their supervisor telling them stuff. It's them reflecting and then giving feedback. And so I can implement those same things with my children so that they have a chance to evaluate and give feedback. You know, I loved what she said about it was a chance for them to tell you how the relationship's going. Right. Because as a parent, we so often think, well, I know how the relationship's going. I know how they feel about me. But it's really from their perspective. Yes. And as adult children now, I mean, when you love it, if your parents were like, very openly, (laughs) without judgment or fear of, you know, without you being worried that you were going to hurt their feelings, if they were like, how do you feel like our relationship's going? I mean, couldn't that bring so much healing? Listen, and- that's amazing. Honestly, that could totally be something that we, I mean, if we start it now, we could carry that into like adult children. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So I just thought that that was so good. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And moms, we will make sure to post the link to those cards because I think that that would be so fantastic for everyone to have. And we'll post all the links to Susan's uh, podcast and her books and what she's been doing because we want you guys, her website, to be able to get in contact with her and really get stuff from all the wonderful resources that she's producing for moms. Yes. Hey moms, we love having you here on the Gather Moms podcast. And we want you to know that we are so excited for our event in October of 2021. You may have seen some uh, promotion for it on our social media, but we want you to mark your calendars for October 22nd and 23rd for the Gather Moms conference. And we want you to share it with a mom. We know you have friends right now that are going to need a mom event in the fall. So go ahead, call your girlfriends and say, put it down. That's our weekend to hang out as moms. And go to gather moms and get encouraged because we know that it's going to be a blessing not only to you but to us too. Yes, and uh, it will be in the Dallas area and you will have more info to come as the date approaches. Okay, moms, thank you so much for being with us today and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.